Hi, I'm Robert Cox. I live at 173 Mount Joy Place. Uh, Dr. Coles, thanks for coming. Um, I had uh, two questions. I wrote them down, so keep them organized. Um, so over the past 15 years, we've had what some members of our school community believe to be two failed superintendencies. I know everybody doesn't agree, but some do. Uh, it appears to a certain extent we're going down the same road this time, and I wonder if it might be try, time to try a different approach, uh, something along the lines of what uh, Pro Quarles was just talking about. Um, the current board has adopted a model to create a lot of ad hoc committees with board members and residents who have some subject matter expertise. Would you consider the idea of having the board adopt a similar approach to their superintendent search committee by adding people who worked in our school community at a high level that might uh, sit with the board and support them in evaluating administrative talent, uh, the kind of candidates that you will identify to them. Uh, I know that uh, we have a few old hands that are around here that have been here for many decades. We know a lot about this community and education and administration in our school district who had a great deal of success on their watch uh, that I believe are ready, willing, and able to sit in if they're asked. Um, and then my second question, and I'll sit down, is um, I want to get a little sense of your own track record. Um, so if you could just tell me how many superintendent searches that you've led, like you're doing here, and what's your batting average specifically of the superintendents that you have placed, uh, 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 how many of those were renewed at the end of their initial contract? Thanks. Because of Larry and Carl, I turned off my mic. Uh, so um, on the uh, you know on the last piece, as far as uh, Dr. Cole's uh, background, I have here, I think you know, his background speaks for himself. Um, and again, this this forum is really more about what are we looking for for our next superintendent. This forum is not here to be um, questioning the the search consultant that we have here, Dr. Coles. So really, we want to spend this time, the, the valuable time that we have, really focusing in on what it is that we're looking for for a superintendent. I'm not here to ask Dr. Coles his background and his and his back batting record. So I just want to address that piece of it. Um, as far as the other piece, I'll leave it to Dr. Coles to to respond. But you know. I don't know where Mr. Cox went to, but uh, you might, I don't think you were here earlier when we talked about having um, you know, administrators and teachers um, interviewing and talking to Dr. Uh, Dr. Coles on Monday to get their feedback on it. So um, they'll have the opportunity for folks within the district that work for the district to give their feedback to Dr. Coles as far as what they're looking for for a super, the next superintendent. And the plan is to make sure that we have a voice to give feedback to the board to help with that process. Um, go ahead. I mean, I understand that you want to run the narrative, uh, Mr. Hasty, but I think the question is absolutely fair. If we're starting a new process, we should know who is helping in the process. Okay, we cannot say this is offline. There's no offlines here, okay, with what happened in the past. We spoke to the president of the board before, and she would try to run the narrative, which took us to this train wreck. So I think we need full openness. So the question of the batting average, I think is fair to see who we are hiring to help us take us out of this mess. So let's not just I, limit I, the and narrative. And I didn't mean to whitewash it, but again, I wanted we have okay, limited so, time. So let's answer and, the question. I know, but we had limited time here. And we would, let me finish up. So we have limited time here. And part of our communication when we send out the survey is going to have his background in there. So that'll be a part of uh, their the communication. The question of the batting average, but, I think is fair. That's okay. Right. Fair, fair enough, okay. okay. I'll let him address it if he, if he likes to, but again, I think we have a limited time here, so I just want to make sure we focus on our next superintendent. Can I just recommend, since we have 10 minutes left in the interest of time, for I, I'm guessing the reason we are here is for everyone in the audience to have the opportunity to ask questions. Yep, I want I to do that I think they want the, the answers yep, exactly. now and not on, on mine. Yep, okay, yeah, and I want to do that at the end. We still have one more question to go through, so. Question first, what do you feel is an appropriate time limit for the uh, for a superintendent after their initial contract renewed, in your opinion? 
what do you think an initial time period for a city of New Rochelle, what the appropriate time uh, term for that superintendent would Contracts, be? what you're talking about? Well, after the initial term, after initial term that we provide. So, so after the initial contract, how much longer should yeah, the How long do you feel is an appropriate uh, amount of time for a new superintendent to be in a district like ours? Oh, you mean as far as time, as far as staying? Okay, staying. I understand what you're saying. I think that um, if you ask anyone who uh, searches, and I ask my colleagues, and I'll just go back to, to the initial question that you had asked earlier as far as my track record. One of the things you need to understand is that my job as the district superintendent for Southern Western Sposis, I'm one of 37 district superintendents in the state that's been appointed by our, our board of cooperative education in our region, but also by the commissioner of education. And part of our responsibility as a district superintendent is to conduct board searches for your districts within the component district region that we, we work with it. And as far as my track record, you'd have to look at our BOCES as a whole. I've only been working this job for six years. Um, and I think that one of the things that we've been looking at is that trying to make sure districts like yours look at the opportunities that having your district super do your search for you. And obviously there's there are certain recommendations, but there are local decisions that districts make based upon their own personal community issues as to why they wind up choosing to use the BOCES or to go to a private firm. I've done three searches. So if you want to know that, it's honestly, there's three searches I've done. I've helped other districts that have used a private search firm. My concerns and my supports have always been, even though I'm not directly doing the search, is to make sure that I'm part of the search process because the end result is there's going to be a superintendent sitting in that school district and my concern is I want to make sure that the best possible candidate sitting in that seat because we want to make sure that the students in Westchester County, New York State, who want to look at the whole state, have the best opportunity to have the best person sit there to support them and lead them, guide them and provide the direct instructional support for the community that they're in. Um, End of the day, I'm working with that person. I'm working with that board. And so even though I might not have been doing direct searches, I've been involved with the process intimately to make sure that there's feedback and support. Once the superintendent's been hired, I work closely with the new superintendents coming in to help them navigate the process, whether they're coming from out of state or coming from a different location or coming in state, but help them with understanding the unique characteristics of Westchester, because you're right, Westchester is a very unique community. And my job as a district superintendent is to support that process in happening. So thank you.